Hello, patrons of the Barbara S. Ponce Library. This is Jasmine. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you a little bit of Word basics, and then I'm going to go over how to create an MLA formatted paper, as this is the style required by most high school and middle school teachers when essay writing, especially now that a lot of learning is done online and virtually as well. So to start with, with a Word document, you of course have all of your different options up here for the basics, like your font size, your font choice, and then you can like underline, you can italicize, bold and font. But this box right here, the paragraph box, is really important because a lot of like Word formatting is based on how you format your actual paper itself. Um, what a lot of people don't realize is there are these arrows in the boxes right here, where if you click on them, you expand out into much like larger boxes. So you get more choices for how to format your paper in more detail. We'll go back to that later. Up here on this tab, you have all your different options. You have the file tab, where if you go here, you can save, you can print, you can even export the Word file as different formats to be compatible with other devices and computers, which is very helpful. In the insert tab over here, give it a second to load. There we go. Well, you can insert a cover page. You can add a blank page or break the page. If you get like halfway down the page and decide like you don't want any more text on that page, that's what that is for. You insert pictures here. You can add different shapes. You can draw on it a little bit. You can add comments. That way, if you're like trying to edit a paper, you can go back and you can just add comments to it instead. So you, it's like an easy way for editing in the document. And then, here you have header, footer, and page number options. So you can add in a header and a footer. You can do this by clicking right here. Or if you double click in the top or bottom space of the document, you can also access the header and footer. Alrighty. And then it'll open this other tab that gives you all sorts of editing options for the header and footer, including a different first page, because oftentimes your first page header includes more information than the headers for the pages after those usually just include a page number whereas the first page may include like your name the date again i'll go more in depth with that with the mla format then you have the design page where you can choose like different preset fonts for the title and headings in your paper more paragraph settings and just different colors and fonts so you can customize and make your own the overall layout where you can change margin size, size of your paper if you're printing on a bigger or small paper, orientation, which is portrait and landscape if you want it sideways, and then different indents and space again, your paragraph options. On the references page, you can add in a table of contents. This is a lot easier than trying to make one yourself if your teacher is requiring that for whatever you're doing, or maybe you're just trying to write something like a small book or a large book. Whatever you're doing, the table of contents is accessible right there. You can add footnotes, which are helpful. You can insert citations, and it even has like options for you to choose like what style citation you're trying to do for your bibliography. That way it can like follow along with it. Captions, different kinds of things that are like more beyond just the basics of Word, which is what I'm trying to go over today. This for emailing, or if it's for a letter. The review page, which is where we have our editor. So if you need to spell check or grammar check, the word count that you have for your page, any translations or languages, again, you can go back and like see the comments that you're making. And then this is if like you share your paper with someone to edit, they can go through and make changes. And you can say, yeah, I'll keep that change that, that the editor or my friend or whoever made for me. Or you can be like, no, I'm gonna keep what I already had. The view page is going to let you just view it entirely, like how it would look when you go to print it, when you share it with someone. This is the print layout. Read mode puts pages side by side. So if you had multiple pages, let's go back into edit document. It's really easy to click in and out. You can change it to see like if you were trying to make a brochure, this helps you to be able to line stuff up correctly, all that kind of stuff. It helps you zoom in and out. You can also zoom in and out down here at the bottom. And then just the different ways that you're going to split to view the paper. And then, of course, Word has the help bar right here in case you get lost doing something. All right, now for MLE format, first you're going to start with just a standard size white paper. 
um, you're going to go ahead and make sure you have one inch margins on your paper. So we go back to layout, we go to margins. The normal is already just one inch margins, so we just keep like what we have. And then you're going to make sure that in your paragraphs, you're going to make sure that the first word or the first line of every page is indented by a half inch, which is the standard already. And then an MLA formatted paper is going to have double spaced usually, because that makes the paper easier to read. You're gonna wanna have Tiny Roman or most teachers will accept any easy to read font. So I often use like Times New Roman or Georgia. You don't wanna use something like this French script that I have here that I used for something else because it's harder to read and not the point when you're trying to print an essay for someone else to read. And then you're gonna to wanna to make sure your font size is 12 points. So you have your 12 point font, you have your easy to read font chosen. And we're gonna come up into the header so I can show you how to make an MLA formatted header. We're going to have to do the same thing. You have to change the header um, font point and font type. So I usually just choose that. I make sure I keep it. You keep it on the left side aligned. And you go ahead and you input your name. And then you input your class. So my class, for example, maybe it's AP Psychology that you're writing a paper for. And then you're going to put what class period you have that class, because oftentimes teachers teach multiple of the same class. And then you're going to include the date that you're writing that paper, or rather that the paper is due. So that's your header. And then you're going to want to include your page numbers. So you want a different first page header. as it loads again, you're gonna want a different first page header. That way you can have the number on all of the pages afterwards. So after the first page, you just have like your name, your date, your class period and such. And then you're gonna to wanna to put your page numbers, usually at the bottom right-hand corner of the paper. It depends on where your teacher wants it as well because sometimes teacher instructions are different. All right, because I, I started writing it out before I chose the different first page header, went ahead and took that away. But when you do the different first page header and you go ahead and input all your materials, then you go ahead and start on the second page, it'll look different. So again, I'll just add this back real quick. All right, so we have all that information. And then what I'll do is I'll go back to my insert and I need a blank page now because I'm moving it on. Because we have a different first page, we can go down here and edit this header because usually your headers will just change with each other. But because we have that different first page header, that one's not gonna change and this one will stay the same. And now every page after the second page is gonna look like the second page. So I can go down here to the footer and I can do the page number and I'm gonna go bottom of the page and I'm gonna choose this page number. And it knows that this is page number two. And from then on, it'll number the pages. All right. So I hope that was enough information about just going through the word basics, making sure you know where the basic things are that you need to be able to write a paper should your teacher request that paper in MLA format. All right, good luck on your essays, you guys.